Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, the new home of power mining analysis. In today's episode, Anthony Power and I are going to be going through March production results from a good portion of the miners we cover on the channel. A lot going on in this space with March being the last full month before the halving, obviously two weeks away. So a lot to go through in today's video, but before we do, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's 100% free to do. It's a big help to both Anthony and myself. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let us know in the comments section below which of these miners you're holding, what your thoughts were on their production results from last month, and your outlook for 2024. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right, today's video, we've got Anthony Power back. We're gonna be going through Mar March production results from many of the top miners that we cover on the channel. We've got quite a long list today, Anthony, so we'll try and get through these. We're gonna go in alphabetical order, but first things first, just wanted to say good morning and thank you for being here. Yeah, good morning, Bryce, great to be here. Likewise, I'm feeling a little off my A game today, Anthony, a little under the weather, so I'll do my best to make it through the podcast here. So we've got uh, March production results. It looks like from about eight of the miners today. We covered Bit Farms and Clean Spark when it came out at the start of the week. Today, we're going to be kicking it off with BitDeer. So Anthony, BitDeer is one we've covered on the channel quite a bit. I know you just put out a great article on them last month as well. What did you think about their March numbers? Um, the March numbers were okay. Um not not as good as some of the peer miners from a self mining perspective um, they produced uh, 294 bitcoin and they've maintained that hash rate of about 6.7 exa hash throughout the month and, and actually throughout uh, 2023 up to now um, that gives them about 43.9 uh, bitcoin per exa hash and if you look at the sort of like the peer miners bit farms and, uh, and some of the other miners it's and, and hive it's, it's sort of closer to 50 49s 49.4, 49.5, so a little bit off, off the pace there. But, um, you know, we, we we talk about bit uh, you know, fairly regularly now because they're bringing out updates literally every other day. And, you know, it was only last week, you know, we talked about, like, expansion with the seal miner. They're going to bring an extra 3.4 extension this year. And that's going to be uh, produced, um, you know, by themselves. They're actually going to be building their own miners. So they just so they just secured orders with TSMC for you know uh, a load of wafers, uh, which will bring you know mining machines worth around sixty million in quarter three, um, and and there'll be some you know manufacturing expense on top of that. But we've they articulated in a recent podcast that eighty percent of the cost of their miners is actually the wafers themselves. So you know you can sort of do the math yourself there. Additionally, they've also successfully deployed their Nvidia um, one hundred uh, GPU chips. Uh, and this is now, you know, sort of like one of the, you know, pioneering services that's happened in Asia. So, you know, a good, a good, up, a good update today in in, in whole. Um, and we'll just have to, you know, see if we can get that production number up there. I mean, whether there's any issues at the sort of like uh, at the facility in Rockdale. So, you know, they sh they sort of on the on the same um, area as as Riot platforms. And whether there's any issues there with power or curtailment, that could be one of the reasons why. One thing Bitdeer don't do is they don't um, tell you if they've earned. Um, credits or power sales in the month they normally wait until the the quarterly update so um other miners tend to include those numbers so i don't want to sort of like you know do a disservice to bit dear but um overall overall you know steady performance for sure and i do recall seeing a few power credits in the riot report as well so likely they uh they were a beneficiary of that anthony and it's going to be really interesting to see how these efficiency metrics and really their mining metrics in general start to change as we see this seal miner a1 roll out and start to become more prevalent in their facilities so uh definitely one to keep an eye on guys the next one we also talk about quite a bit uh bit digital so they just upsized that hpc ai contract obviously we talk about that a lot on the channel but in terms of self mining anthony a uh, fairly strong month i thought for for bit digital considering the size of the company right um yeah no a, a good month for bit digital the company mined just over 136 bitcoin during the month which was a, an increase on the total achieved in the month of february but obviously you've got an extra couple of days mining but also the difficulty impacted most of these miners from a production standpoint um their total hash rate at, at the end of march was 2.76 exa hash and we know that they're looking to get that figure to 6x x hash by the end of the year and they'll have plans to do that 
Um, one thing that's interesting about BitDigital is, is they've got a significant amount of uh, treasury. So they, they, they do have a, a, a hodl of Bitcoin of 956.6 Bitcoin and over 16,000 Ethereum. And if we look at the end of March 31st and add that to their cash balance in the treasury, that was a total of $162 million. And when you consider, you know, they've got a market capitalization today of about $270 million. There's a lot of treasury in that actual market capitalization. So, um, you know, from a self mining perspective, uh, really, really good. Um, they're still doing, um, you know, the, 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 the uh, staking their Ethereum, but during the month of March, that, that amount reduced to just 3,800 um, Ethereum that was actually staked because they've changed their uh, provider. And so we might see that increase again, but that still brings in over a hundred thousand dollars of revenue for the for the company. Um, and I think everyone else was waiting for for a month was actually to to, to see if they were going to um, include their earnings from their high performance computing contract, and they did. And the company earned four point three million from its contract in the month of March. So that's on track to be fifty million. We know that Sam is looking to increase that now it's it's it looks to increase to over 100 million by the end of the year so um yeah i i don't think we can say anything negative about that update say at all yeah very strong month anthony uh bitcoin production and i was impressed to see that hpc revenue increase from the 4 million up to i think you mentioned 4.3 so that was good to see that moving in the right direction it's interesting you bring up the cash position because a lot of these companies now are sitting on hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. I know the big players in a lot of cases are upwards of a billion dollars of cash reserve. And yesterday uh, when we did our interviews, Anthony, it was very interesting talking to Griffin about coming to the public markets, that cycle, the two-year process, and the fact that a lot of these private miners, because they don't have access to the capital markets, they're not gonna have the financing to upgrade their fleets and that's where they really feel a lot of the M&A activity is going to happen is these smaller private miners that maybe don't have deep enough pockets to upgrade their fleet in anticipation of uh, having. So I thought that was really interesting and I can't help but think about that as you start talking about all these um, hundreds of millions of dollars of, of acquisition potential out there, right? So it's going to be an exciting month. Uh, probably exciting couple months here for sure. Now, another smaller miner, uh, good results. We're actually reached out to get them back on the channel for an interview in early May here. DMG Blockchain. So they're based here in Canada, Christina Lake, um, working through their immersion upgrades right now. What were your thoughts on their numbers, Anthony? Yeah, they, they again, you know, DMG have been very solid um, in 2024 and um, they produced uh, just under 50 Bitcoin, 49.8 Bitcoin. Um, with about one X hash of a realized hash rate throughout the month. And, you know, that puts them sort of like, you know, towards, you know, in, in, in terms of production by X hash, in the sort of like in the, in the top three or four uh, of the mining companies. So, you know, a good update from them. They do hodl. So they've got 446 Bitcoin in the hodl. They did sell, I think it was like 72 Bitcoin. So, you know, they've announced, um, you know, uh, in the last update that they're bringing in four and a half thousand T21 miners between now and the end of end of June, which will give them, you know, close to uh, two exa hash when all those are installed up and running, and they're going to operate those at slightly less than maximum output, um, because that will give them a, a, a better uh, balance of power cost and efficiency. So they've already highlighted that they're not going to run them hot; they're going to run them at a level where they where they get a good a good um, balance of, of power and efficiency and production. So. Um, going the right way. Uh, they, they've got, uh, like I say, 446 Bitcoin as a hodl, and that gives them about $32 million um, in the treasury just in Bitcoin alone. So, you know, we talk about treasury, and you mentioned it, you know, just earlier. Going into this halving, you want to see miners that have got, you know, finances to get them through it, because as I say, we, we, we can't comment what the Bitcoin price is. It's, it's sort of like dropped a little bit from its highs a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, the, the halving is now two weeks, two weeks away um, today. So, you know, it's not long at all. So we get the April updates out. They're going to be impacted by the halving because the halving will have occurred 11 days before the end of the month. So having this cash runway will give some of these miners the ability to sort of like at least pay for power, pay for staff costs as the Bitcoin price um, sorts itself out. 
Yeah, wild to think we're only two weeks away. I actually follow Nico from Simply Bitcoin uh, on Instagram and he's down in El Salvador for a Bitcoin halving party. They're doing a big party on the beach down there right in front of one of the volcanoes. So it looks pretty uh, interesting to say the least, Anthony. We should have should have booked some flights for that one. Now, up next, we've got the H's. We've got Hive and Hut. Uh, we'll start off with Hive. Um, Anthony, what were your thoughts on their production in the month of March? Yeah, I mean, Hive probably, you know, one of the top two consistent miners for the last three or four years. Um, produced 224 Bitcoin at a very, very um, good rate of about 49.7 Bitcoin per exahash. So that's at the very t- that's at the very top, and I think at the moment there's probably only one miner that's actually um, ahead of that. But but you're talking, you know, that's consistent month after month. It's not just an, an odd occurrence for Hive. They are producing that level for the last three years, um, in my analysis. Um, and they managed to increase their hash rate as well. So the hash rate at the end of um, uh, March was was 4.7 exahash. That was an increase of about 13 percent. One thing we've seen them do over the last th- three or four months is, is increase their hodl position. And, and their hodl position for the end of March rose to 2,287 Bitcoin. And that gives them, um, you know, a, 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 a treasury balance of about 163 million. So again, you know, as at the end of uh, end of March, 31st of March, that's a really, you know, a good position to be in. Going through the, the halving, looking for opportunities, maybe to use some of that to, um, you know, increase their their fleet and I think they have a plan to get to eight exahash by the end of the year so we'll see how that how that manages from there um but um yeah it's uh it's it's a good it's a good update uh you know and and, and we always expect that from Hive generally there's two or three miners we know that that come out consistently month after month yeah and it'll be the last full month of uh pre-having so it'll be interesting to see how these numbers compare now to April Anthony um, now, speaking of balance sheet, this next one has got quite a bit of money on the or Bitcoin on the balance sheet or uh, cash equivalents. HUD8 Mining or HUD8 Corp now post merger, um, they were just on the program as well. Asher was talking about the flexibility, some of their uh, synthetic and, and option strategies with that big hodl. They've got over 9,000 Bitcoin on their balance sheet now, Anthony. Considering the market cap here, this one's definitely starting to look interesting, eh? Yeah, no, um, I mean, they are, you know, using a little bit, they're using their production and probably spending a little bit more. I mean, this, this month, it was only, um, you know, 2% of their hodl they, they, they spent uh, on top of their monthly production. So um, if you look at what they produced um, in the month, uh, that was 231 Bitcoin. Their, their hodl has, um, has gone down by 8 Bitcoin. It's now at 9,102 million but if you look at the value of that at the end of march that's like 650 million dollars in bitcoin um at the 31st of march prices and so you know very very strong you know that's close to be honest that's close to what the market capitalization is um of of the company at the moment so um you know if, if you think about what else they've got they've got a significant managed service business a significant hosting business and they've got 7.2 in terms of hash rate. Now, if you look at March itself, they weren't able to operate at 7.2 because we highlighted in the previous update that they were closing the Drumheller site and that closed during the month of March. And those machines will now be moved to another site um, in Canada. So, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully, once they're uh, installed there, they'll get that hash rate back up and running and be more consistent because we know they have some real issues with Drumheller. Um, so they had a deployed hash rate of about 5.4. So that was um, that was a drop, you know, a, a significant drop on what on, on what they were previously highlighting. But I know that hot over the last year or so have been have, have never been one to sort of like shy away from putting their total hash rate out there. And you know, like a number of other miners, um, don't don't tend to use uh, an operational hash rate. But I think when you actually physically move machines out of one site you can't really turn around and say they are deployed at that moment in time. So um, it was good to see that they they, they uh, showed the correct uh, deployed hash rate 5.4. Let's see what it is in April. We want that hash rate to be back up to 7.2. We want to see more growth in the self-mining like Asher uh, explained on the podcast, looking for opportunities. Um, but the managed services and the hosting business seem to be, you know, seem to be growing. Um, the, the, they are moving out of their sites one thing they, they highlighted was they're moving out to their sites 
um, at, at Granbury, um, and that site has been purchased by uh, Marathon Digital and also the Kearney site as well. So they're really relocating their miners out of that, but actually they're still getting paid up until the end of April, and post that um, um, termination, they're going to get um, a fee of about thirteen and a half million dollars. So that'll put them um, in, a, in, a, in a good position to you know seek opportunities after the halving and. Um, you know, highlights and strengthens what Ashley was saying on the, on the last podcast. It didn't take Marathon long to get into those facilities, hey, Anthony, but the $13 million never hurts. And, uh, yeah, when we start talking about hodls here, $600 million, $700, $800 million, I can't help but think, Anthony, who is the person at these companies that's responsible for that uh, code phrase or, or transferring this amount of Bitcoin around in the cold storage wallets? It's, it's just crazy to think those dollar amounts. Um, I saw the other day someone transferred over a billion dollars of Bitcoin for a total fee of $3.17. So the amount of money flying around these days with Bitcoin is is quite impressive. Um, now, Asher did say most of the turnaround impacts are going to be noticeable Q2 and onward. So Q2 will be when we start to see a lot of the... Uh, post-leadership changes, post-integration changes kind of coming to fruition. Now, the next one we have is Iron. Um, this company has been getting a ton of recognition on X, on all the social media platforms, and had a very strong week compared to a lot of the other miners here over the last few trading sessions, Anthony. There was multiple days it was up double digits. Uh, a lot of people starting to pick up on the Iron story. Strong production for March. What do you have for this one? Yeah, I... I Again, they've had a very, very good, um, very good twelve months. Actually, if you go back to to last year when they managed to, you know, start purchasing those machines that they left a gap from when the, the previous uh, machines were taken by uh, by Nidi, um for the for the loan that they uh, defaulted on. But but if you think where they've come from that point in time um, to today, it's been you know nothing short of you know fairly astonishing. Really, they achieved eight x hash by the end of March. Uh, the total average operating hash rate um, increased in February. It was about 6.3x hash. In March, it was 7.1x uh, hash as an average operating hash rate. They produced uh, 353 Bitcoin. So, you know, a big increase on, on what they did in February. And in terms of revenues, um, if you think about what revenues, because of the Bitcoin price as well, so there's an there's a increase in hash rate, increase in revenues. Revenues were up about 56% in March than they were in February. So... That puts you, uh, you know, into a good position. We know Iron um, sell their Bitcoin on a daily basis, and you know that that Bitcoin sold, um, you know, was twenty three point seven million for the month. They also articulate what the electricity cost to mine each Bitcoin is, and we've seen that steadily increasing uh, throughout twenty twenty four. So in January it was eighteen thousand um, seven hundred. In February it just went over twenty thousand, and in March it was twenty thousand three hundred forty three dollars per bitcoin so that's that's showing what it is pre-halving we know that post-halving you know effectively the energy costs will double because the rewards um to, to mine one bitcoin will be reduced it'll take twice as much energy to get that full reward uh, that they were getting at the moment so um that takes you to forty thousand. then you've got to add on your sort of like operating expenses so if the bitcoin price stays where it is at the moment, sort of like that, between sixty-six and and seventy thousand um, dollars, they're still going to be in a good position to mine. Uh, another interesting part is they they've now got uh, three hundred one million dollars of cash on the balance sheet and no debt at all. So they're in a strong position going forward. They've um, basically informed that they've um, ac activated their option to purchase the additional machines to get them to twenty x hash by the end of the year. Um, so, you know, they're on track to get to 10x a hash, and, and I don't think many people will be down to them get to 10x by the end of June. We can see the sites now. It looks like the, the, the site for that first 100 megawatts is, from, a, from an aerial perspective, it looks like it's nearing completion. And I believe 60 megawatts of that are actually being utilised at the moment, with the other 40 to come online in the next month or so. And that gets them enough power then to get to 10x a hash. And then you've got to start all over again and get another 10x a hash by the end of December. So, that, you know, a big challenge for the rest of the year. But the way they're going at the moment, not many people will be down soon to do that. We can also talk about the update on the cloud services. So, you know, they've, like a number of other miners, have gone for the NVIDIA um, H100 GPUs. They've got 248 operating. 
and 568 um, in commissioning with customer negotiations going on as we as we talk through this podcast. So um, very, very optimistic um, for, for, for the year for them. I mean, they highlighted when those machines are all working, I think the, 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 the potential profit generated for those will be between 14 and 17 million um, from the HPC business. So that, that's a, a good additional amount of revenues not correlated to Bitcoin price. Um, and puts them in a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a good spot going forward, you know. Um, but yeah, good good update from Iron. The 20 exahash is a tall order, but if any team's up to it, I think it's Iron. And it's going to be interesting to see, Anthony, we've, we've seen the depreciation cycles on these Bitcoin mining rigs. I'm interested to see what kind of lifespan or depreciation numbers we're seeing on the uh, HPC AI stuff. You got to imagine these chips have a fairly short lifespan as, as they are coming out almost quarterly now. Uh, the other thing I was going to say, as you mentioned, Iron sells monthly. Yesterday, I, I believe it was actually Asher on X that I saw said OTC desks and trading desks are actually reaching out to the Bitcoin miners directly now to purchase Bitcoin straight from them. So it'll be interesting to see companies like Iron and, and the rest who sell daily if they start to just sell directly to those OTC exchanges. But definitely starting to see Bitcoin drying up. Uh, heading into having, which is exactly what we wanted and we're hoping for, Anthony. So that'll be good. Absolutely. Now, uh, the next one, Riot. Now, interestingly enough, we had Jason Les on the program. We talked about operational hash rate. And lo and behold, uh, Anthony, we got an operational hash rate out of Jason this month. So our next goal is to really standardize some all-in costs per coin. But it's nice to see uh, that we're getting some traction with these metrics. And I think it does do... Riot and Jason and team uh, a disservice almost if they're not comparing apples to apples with some of the other miners. So what was your take on uh, the first monthly production report with the operational hash rate included, Anthony? Yeah, I mean, J J Jason didn't hide from the fact that, you know, there's a number of machines that um, op aren't operating as well as you expect them to be at the site there at Rockdale. And so, you know, this month, as you articulated, they've, they've come out and, and put their op Average operating hash rate of about 8.6x. Now that's that's significantly lower than 12.4, but you know Jason's um, explained the position on that, and what they've done is they went out and, and have ordered you know over 31,000 machines um, to go into that Rockdale facility. Uh, a large chunk of those will be to change the machines that they've got at the moment, and these machines you know effectively have still got value. They can still be sold post um, post that. Um, when they're taken out of the, of the Rockdale facility. So there's still some value there. Um, but they'll also increase that hash rate to, a, to over 15 exa hash. Um, and that will happen between now and the end of quarter three. So over the next sort of like five or six months, that hash rate will, will, will creep up there. So in the month of March, they mined 425 Bitcoin, uh, an average of 13.7 a day. Um, you know, slightly higher total than, than February, but obviously you've got an extra couple of days mining. And we didn't know in February what the operational hash rate, but what we do now, it was 8.5 exahash in February, and they've increased that to 8.6. So, you know, a, a slight increase. With regards to power credits and demand response credits, um, the company achieved an extra one, uh, 1 1.3 million. So if you convert that into, say, um, Bitcoin equivalent, that's about 18 Bitcoin on top of what they mined. So... That was that was interesting. But the, the key thing for for the companies is their actual size of their hodl. They increased their hodl to eight thousand four hundred ninety, and they only sold effectively two bitcoin uh, during the month. And so you know they've got a, a hodl now of about um, six hundred and six million dollars based on the bitcoin price as at the thirty first of March. And they've also highlighted to us that they've got um, about uh, six hundred million. Um, power, uh, sorry, dollars in their treasury as well. So, you know, you're looking at a company that have got, you know, the best part of 1.3 billion. So when we talked about, you know, companies having you no know, cash runway, there's not many that can compete with the likes of Riot Platforms in that position. Maybe maybe one of the minor at the moment that springs to mind. The other, the other thing they've updated is obviously the work that's ongoing at uh, the Corsicana site. So um, that's going to be, you know, an enormous facility when it's fully functional i mean it's one gigawatts of of power and you know they made some big orders they ordered sixty six thousand machines to go into this facility and the machines have started to arrive um in buildings uh a1 and 
and you know that will start operating in the first half of April 2024. So maybe in the next couple of weeks we'll get an update when the machines are actually energised, and we'll see that those facilities there at Corsicana continue to um, increase in capacity and energisation. And by the end of the year, you know they're planning to have an ex, uh, a capacity of 31 exahash, and They've been working on Corsicana for quite for quite some time now, and you know you, they started issuing uh, more photographs of the facility, the all immersion cooling technology being used in that facility. So they've got a challenge to get you know from where they are at the moment in terms of um, energized hash rate up to their target. But you look at that size of the facility and the machines coming in now, um, you know again, you know we'd expect right to, to get close to that figure by the end of the year. Yep, Corsicana is going to be a sight to be seen, Anthony, and we're going to be seeing it in, in first person uh, HD on the ground. So that'll be great. And it's interesting, yeah, two Bitcoin being sold. I guess they're just making sure the wallet still works or something there. But uh, HODL is getting impressive. Over 8,000, uh, very nice nest egg to be sitting on going into the halving. Now, other end of the spectrum, we've got Sato Technologies. We've had Romain on the program a number of times. Very interesting player here traditionally or consistently one of the most efficient miners despite the smaller fleet size um how was march for sato anthony any different um march was a very, for them it was a, you know a very a very steady month again um you know they are one of the smaller mining companies they've got a hash rate just over literally half an exa hash and they produced 26 uh, bitcoin during the month of march that brought in you know close to 1.8 million dollars of revenue and um you know, their average uh, monthly hash rate of 598 was an increase on the previous two months. So they're increasing that hash rate slowly. Um, they do have a, a Bitcoin hodl. So they increased their Bitcoin hodl, which was 52 in February to 62 in March. Um, that gives them a, a hodl value of about four and a half million dollars. And they've just got under about a million dollars in terms of cash. So, you know, you're looking at a, a small mining company there with about five and a half million dollars um, in their treasury um, we should be you know able to deploy you know as and when required you know um, as we go through this halving and if opportunities arise for them as well and um, we do know that they're also looking into the um, high performance computing um, and you know that there's a, an opportunity for them they may be to, able to add uh, additional data centers for that particular service so that they're, they're focused on you know not just the self-mining but the hpc side as well and that seems to be a common theme with you know the vast majority of the mining companies that we look at at the moment yeah there's definitely something there anthony as we talked about there's no way all of these companies are so excited about hpc ai um for no reason right so the margins it is a capex intensive upfront, but it sounds like very aggressive margins very uh, nice returns once you're up and running and i'm just looking as we were talking here anthony the bitcoin price is flirting with sixty-eight thousand five hundred again um so hopefully we get a nice green finish to the week here now marathon as well we wanted to finish up with you guys uh they put out their production results very close race with clean spark throughout the month i know a lot of people were monitoring that uh, looks like Marathon was able to come out on top, Anthony, but just barely. Um, yeah, in the, in the race between uh, them and Clean Spot, they've 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 come out on top. They've they've um, mined uh, eight hundred ninety four Bitcoin, um, but I expect um, you know we'll, we'll be interested to see what Core Scientific come out. They've still to release their numbers, so maybe Core Scientific um, maybe just pit them just over 900 because of course scientific release their numbers on a daily basis. I think their average has been something like 2930 Bitcoin every day of March. So if you do, you know, a quick calculation there, it certainly gets them to about 900. So it looks like the first three months of the year go to core scientific 894 for marathon. When you consider that they have, um, you know, uh, installed hash rate of, um, 27.8 um, exahash. I mean, that's that's actually dropped since February. So in February, it was 28.7. So the hash rate for March has dropped to 27.8. But 27.8, is it's nearly, you know, 10 exahash more than the next mining company in terms of self-mining. So, you know, you've got to wonder where, what the issues are rega regarding some of these, um, some of these uh, facilities they've got. And they are quite widespread across a number of facilities. Um, now they are taking on control of of, of the um, Kearney and the Granbury, and they've just um, 
made that other final purchase of, of the uh, Garden City um, uh, facility. So, you know, hopefully we'll see some sort of improvement once they've got the full control over theirs. It's, it'll be down to them, you know, themselves then to uh, make sure they're operating as close to you or utilisation as close to 100 percent as possible. Um, but the strength of, of Marathon is is really um, in their hodl position at the moment. With the Bitcoin price, like you just articulated there at 68,000, um, they've got a hodl now of 17,381. And if you think what the price of Bitcoin was on the 31st of March, that's, you know, that's uh, $1.24 billion just in the Bitcoin. Um, alongside that, they've also got um, about $324 million in cash. So they've got well over one and a half billion as at the 31st of March in their sort of treasury. Um, and they've been very clear that, you know, they're looking to utilize that to grow. And if opportunities uh, come up, um, they'll do that. And, and I, I expect, you know, having made those three purchases of, of, of facilities, they'll be looking for more facilities now. Um, I think they realize the, 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 the asset owned operated facilities um, is a, is a, is a better deal, and actually, the, you know, they'll, it'll save them hosting fees that they've been paying out for the last few years. Um, not, you know, quite, you know, quite significant. We look at the, the price of energy and the hosting fee. The hosting fee for them is is being you know, sort of like thirty percent of the energy fee on top. So they'll be able to save some of that um, by buying their for sites. Now, obviously, you've got to pay for the facilities, so there is a payback period over that. But um, you know, if you do the numbers and, and a company the size of Marathon Digital, you'd want to make sure that you have control over your facilities. Um, it's all right if you've got a, a, a very small amount. So if you've got like the joint venture in, say, Abu Dhabi, where it's, you know, you're looking at, you know, less than two extra hashes there as they're part of that controller, that's more, more, more manageable because, you know, they've got a smaller state than the operator. So, um, but when you've got these big sites and some of these sites on, you know, seven, eight, nine exahash when they're energized, you know, this is some of their sites are bigger than some of the mining companies that we look at. So um, it's been a it's been a challenging 2024. I mean, we were singing the praises of Marathon Digital in December when they achieved eighteen hundred and, you know, uh, fifty three. I think Bitcoin it was. But since, and we did say in that in that uh, in that podcast, I remember clearly. Let's hope they can continue that because that is an you know they broke literally every record in a month, and uh, for some reason they seem to have broke every record for the wrong reasons in January, February, and March. So um, I don't know how the um, how the Mara pigs are coping at the moment, but uh, maybe some have, have switched over to other miners out there who are, who, who seem to be getting a, you know, a better a better return on 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 their. Um, on their production at the moment but uh yeah i mean you, you've got pros and cons to marathon production poor but balance sheet strength seconds none really yeah and that's why i love the hodl i'm in the hodl camp anthony but uh yeah we'll have to do a health check on some of the mara pigs out there i saw a few of them on on x weren't too happy with the results but uh hopefully marathon can turn it around and that's what we talk about anthony when you get that kind of size and scale it's virtually impossible to have everything running perfectly all the time, right? There's just too many variables, too many questions, especially if you're not fully owned uh, facilities. There's there's a lot of question marks that can come up. So hopefully Mara can get it back on track for Q2. Uh, still a beast in the industry, and, and I would expect they start to put that balance sheet to use pretty quick here. Um, a lot of updates here, Anthony, today. We went through as many as we could, you guys. We'll continue to update you next week as more come out. Have a great weekend, you guys. Anthony, I'll throw it back to you for any closing thoughts. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we saw that, you know, a, a, a drop in Bitcoin production for these miners in the month of March, but that increase um, in, the, in, the, in the Bitcoin revenue, which went up 17% based on what it was at the end of February to the end of March, that's helped a lot of miners out um you know get get some more revenues just in time really for this for this halving to to to, to bolster what they've got in the treasury positions there because you know it's sixty eight thousand if you just articulate that i looked this morning it was thinking it's closer to sixty six thousand so um you know and it was seventy three thousand a couple of weeks ago so we've talked constantly about the volatility of bitcoin we, we don't pr put predictions of prices out there we're happy when it goes up we're bewildered when it drops because we believe in the in the long term uh, Bitcoin price um, but these miners will need some sort of like you know at least to maintain current levels going through that halving um, and, and that will give them some sort of breathing space to get things ready um, in case the Bitcoin price pushes 
and they're in a position then where they can sort of like really grow their strategies um, to get to where they need to by the end of the year and by the end of 2025. A lot of these miners now aren't talking 2024 anymore. They're talking 2025 and onwards. And the hash rates that have been articulated by two or three of these miners were looking at 50, 60, 70, even 100 exahash um, in, in the not too distant future. And, you know, the way that things are accelerating at the moment, you wouldn't bet against them achieving those levels. And what does that then mean for some of the smaller miners for them growth positions? How can they, you know, get onto that bandwagon and grow, um, you know, uh, in the same sort of like percentage growth, not talking about, you know, grow from one X hash to 100 X hash, but grow, you know, grow at least with the, with the sort of like the global hash rate. So it's going to be an interesting time. It most certainly will. I can hardly wait, Anthony. A month's time, it's going to be the, the first week of May. We're going to be talking about April updates, and I can hardly wait to see what the price of Bitcoin is at that time. Uh, a lot going on today, you guys. No shortage of news. We'll uh, make sure we keep you updated next week as well. Have a great weekend. Hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.